In this video, I will give you an idea how to figure out the shape for the ripped joist. And remember, we're going to need to slope a quarter of an inch per foot. First thing you're going to need to do is figure the length of the cantilever. Our cantilever here is five foot. We're going to subtract an inch and a half for the rim joist and then make a mark at four foot ten and a half inches and then we will drop down an inch whatever we are going to figure for our the distance for the waterproofing as I pointed out in the other video and I will put a link to the video right here on this area here so that you can go check that video out if you need to so the drop distance here that we're going to use is an inch. Two inches might be recommended, but again, that'll, that can create problems when we start to get to the end of longer cantilevers. You know, I've seen these joists rip down to two by six at the end, and that's not going to not gonna make the engineers happy. Next measurement we're going to need to do is figure out the length of the drop in the cantilever. Remember, it's a quarter of an inch per foot. So if we're coming out five feet, five times uh, 0.25 will give us a one and a quarter inch drop. So this measurement here will be one and a quarter inches. Then we will simply connect the dots. And again, you don't have to draw these lines out. You just got to get your points that you are going to connect. I'm kind of drawing it out here to give you an idea. And then that will give you the lines to cut and you are ready to go. I wanted to give you an example of what it would look like with the measurements on it. Nine and a quarter, four foot ten and a half. If we add the inch and a half rim joist on, that's going to give us five foot. Here's the one inch drop. And then ten and a half inches would be the measurement from here to here after we subtracted the inch. So again, longer joists can be a problem. I mean, longer cantilevers can reduce this number drastically. In this example, we are going to have a cantilever that is going to stick out seven feet, six inches. A one inch drop gives us our 10 and a half inches. Uh, this is almost going to be two inches of a drop in uh, seven and a half feet. If you could just imagine for every one, for every four feet in length, you're going to drop one inch. So that might help you when you're trying to figure your math out also. So if you were to go two feet, it would be a half of an inch. So if you had a six foot length, it would be one foot and a half inches. A one half inch for every two feet, one inch for every four feet. And then, of course, this is going to give us an eight and a half inch. If we subtract two inches from the ten and a half inches, we're going to have eight and a half inches. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. Let's go ahead and bring up some paperwork and explain it to you one more time. Seven feet, six inches or seven feet, six inches. This is a uh, I guess I could have wrote out the inches. Huh? It didn't make any sense. Or a 90 inch long cantilever. Seven feet is 84 inches. 84 inches plus 6 inches, 90 inches. Hope that makes sense. Quarter inch per foot drop or a quarter inch for every 12 inches. Whatever, again, this might be more helpful than this. That's why I'm throwing it out there and using it in the example. 7.5, if we take 6 inches, that is one half of a foot. 0.5 is the decimal for a half for one half. 7.5 times 0.25, which is a quarter of an inch or a quarter. Same thing as a quarter in a dollar for those who are learning math here. That leave, if we multiply these together, that'll give us 1.875 or 1 and 7 eighths inches. We can round it off to 2 inches. That's what I was talking about. If you can always go a little bit deeper, the quarter inch per foot is a minimum distance. So you can always go a little bit. I mean, one and seven eighths to make it easy on you. Why not make it two inches? So seven foot six, and that covers the drop. This is the length. Seven foot six inch cantilever. All we need to do is multiply the length of the cantilever by two to get the distance that's going to need to go back into the floor framing. 
15 feet is the minimum distance that will go back into the floor framing.